In Karen Travis's Republic Commando world, the main drivers behind the narrative were brotherhood, family, duty, and honor. The thread that bound the culture of Mandalore together was often found in its unique language, Mandoa. The original written form of the language was created by Philip Metchin for a visual on Jango Fett's ship for Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones. Later, composer Jesse Harlan required a spoken form of the language for his soundtrack to the 2005 video game Republic Commando. With that and Karen Travis's deeper extensions on the language for her use in the Republic Commando novels, Mandoa became a cult tongue within the Star Wars fan base. Mandoa is a very aggressive but compassionate language used in RC novels. It's unique in that it's gender neutral and warrior oriented and it very much ties all the other principles of the culture together like any real world language would. Mandoa is one of those things, uh, it's like many of the characters from the novels in that it has no real previous context in, in a way that it's been used. Uh, with the exception of a few times that Mark Thompson has used the Mando language in uh, novels like some of the Legacy of the Forest series, um, its pronunciation and its usage has never been kind of fleshed out in, in a way that uh, it's used in the Republic Commando series. So that's something that we get to do. We get to explore that audio territory uh, and really craft the Mandalorian spoken word. So on a regular basis, I practice the pronunciation of words like daikut, uh, which roughly means idiot or moron. Uh, it's not a term one usually hears in polite society. Or nirvad, uh, nirvad, which means uh, my brother or my sister. It's again, it's that gender neutral language coming into play. Um, and we work very hard to make sure that we're really uh, nailing it as much as possible when it comes to the Mandela language. Whether or not the language and specifics of Mandalorian culture are used or recycled in the upcoming The Mandalorian series on Disney Plus remains to be seen, but within the Republic Commando novels, it is very much alive and well. So right now, in hard contact, there's not a lot of Mandoa being thrown around. Um, but as the novels continue to progress, that Mandalorian language is going to explode, especially with the introduction of some of the training sergeants like Kaus Karata, uh, Waylon Vau, and other members of the Kuul Valdar, which, oddly enough, is Mandoa for those who do not exist. Now, these characters have never really had a voiceover presence in the Star Wars Legends universe. Uh, in other words, no one's ever heard what they sound like, uh, so it's been exciting for us, for you know, for me, for Cal Skarada in particular, um, to kind of craft his voice and his mannerisms uh, from scratch, basically. Uh, so when these characters are fully introduced, uh, we want our listeners who aren't, you know, fluent in Mandoa to still be able to latch on and pick up the jargon and not feel like Arutis, which literally means uh, outsiders or not one of us. So today I wanted to start with some basic nouns, verbs, and proper phrases, um, such as buche or bouche, which literally means uh, helmet or bucket. Um, in other words, time to put your buche on, boys. Um, elite, which means clan or family. Um, Adika, which is a term of endearment for a loved one. Uh, it has no gender, again, like Nirvad. Uh, it can be used for man or woman. Uh, it generally means little one or, or loved one. Um, Cal uses this considerably when referencing the clones uh, as he treats them like his own surrogate children. The Manda is the Mandalorian concept of the afterlife, which is a collective soul or heaven uh, it's described as the state of being Mandalorian in mind, body, and spirit. Ni sukui gar kiradici ni partali gar darosomi, which translated means, I'm still alive, but you are dead. I remember you, so you are eternal, which is kind of the closest thing that uh, Mandoade have to a prayer. And it's something that they say on a regular basis daily for people that they know and have loved, but have lost. And on this episode of P for Plenty, we'll make sure that we put links uh, in the description below for anybody that wants to learn more about the Mandalorian language, because um, it, it really is a regular resource uh, to turn to when you're reading, uh, not just hard contact, but the books that will come in the future, because uh, Karen Travis really drives home the Mandalorian language. So you're gonna see a lot of it.